Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Susie and I am the host of I Run Things. If you're looking for inspiration to take out on your runs, you've come to the right place. In this new series called Runfluencers, I introduce you to some of the best creators of running content on YouTube and other social media platforms. So without further ado, sit back, relax, and enjoy today's interview. And please don't forget to subscribe. how are you thank you so much for being hi well, thank you for having me <laughs> i know it's you know when you're in europe and i'm in the united states it's kind of tough to fit this within our busy schedules um so i understand you you guys are still in lockdown uh no uh they still okay. have they have some restrictions but uh yeah we're pretty much free to do whatever we want as long as we stay uh, it's a, a meter and a half here so it's a little bit closer than six feet <laughs> this is this uh, is different that's, for coronavirus <laughs> that's funny your coronavirus is not as aggressive as ours <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so thank you for um you know taking my invite and um on such sure notice because i asked you yesterday and you said yes um i've been a fan of your channel forever <laughs> thank you my own channel i have 20 25 subscribers and i looked at you and you had like 800 and it was like oh, that must be so much work <laughs> well you know how so much work it is because you're there now because so. <laughs> yeah. i'm right there <laughs> yeah <laughs> um so for those who may be watching this video and don't know who you are just uh why don't you introduce yourself uh i'm uh, arno my channel is uh, run arno run uh yeah my channel is about everything run related. So from the races that I run to uh, run training, I'm a, a run coach, certified run coach. Um, also, yeah, uh, she reviews or anything that I film with to do my runs. So anything basically that I can think about <laughs> to make a video about that's related to running, I'll, uh, I'll make a video about. Uh, yeah. And how, how did coaching happen for you? Because I know that the beginning when you started with your YouTube channel, you were not a coach and then you uh, no. took an exam and yeah, and you started being a coach. So how did you, what, is that something you wanted to do or, or did you realize? Uh, no, I just, yeah, I started out running and pretty soon after that, I started out with the videos cause I wanted to yeah, make a, a video log basically for myself to, to have right. something to look at, but also because I was traveling for my races, I wanted to show other people the races that I was running in, especially the, the Disney runs that I do, because yeah, they're a lot of fun to do, but also a lot of fun for other people to watch. Right. So uh, that's how I, I started with the channel. And once I started doing the training videos, I thought, yeah, I'm telling other people what they should do with the running. So maybe it'd be a good plan for me to get certified and actually know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, right, so that's right. how I started with that. So you mentioned races. I, you know, I've been following your videos and, and you've run a few races I have on my bucket list. <laughs> the, um, um, what, what's the name of the one in South Africa that you ran? The, the big five marathon. The big five. I was going to say the big four. It's like four <laughs> number. <laughs> the big and you've obviously done run Disney races. You've done, yeah. which is another race I have on my bucket list. Um, which one was your favorite? Ooh, uh, yeah, that's, that's tough. a tough I, question. I, yeah, because uh, the first marathon I ran was the uh, Walt Disney World Marathon. And I kind of, before I ran the marathon, before I even ran a single marathon, I made a list of marathons that I wanted to run that seemed like a lot of fun to me. And uh, I had this huge list. And then I started with the top one. <laughs> so I went straight <laughs> to number one that I thought would be my favorite. And that was uh, the Walt Disney World Marathon. That was my first one. And now that I've run the big five marathon, it's, yeah, that's, that's very close. They're two very different marathons, but that was so beautiful. Just running uh, in Africa with wild animals around and just the surroundings. Yeah, I think that is my favorite <laughs> just for the, the course. Right, right. So I, I, I just can't even imagine what kind of support do you have when you're running B5? Do you have like the, your standard, you know, every three miles water and goose? Uh, 
Yeah, they're, they're there with water. They're, uh, yeah. yeah, it's a, a little bit smaller than at normal marathons, but there are only 300 runners allowed. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's not a big scale marathon, but yeah, they're there with water. They have little uh, baggies with water so you don't get cups or anything. Uh, right. And, uh, so, yeah, you're obviously not allowed to throw any trash around. So it's, it's all very clean. But uh, yeah, there, there's support and there's uh, a lot of uh, uh, rangers there. So if you run into animals on the course, uh, they take care of that. So, and so, that's actually how they, uh, they ended our marathon as well. Cause uh, around the 40 K mark, there were elephants on the course. So they stopped everybody. They, they got all the safari vehicles over and everybody had to get in the vehicles, get around the elephants and then restart the marathon right before the finish. <laughs> Yeah, I'll link that video below so people can go watch it because I, I, I enjoy the whole series because you have videos before that. Yeah. Um, you know, running with other folks. Um, so it seems like the organization is very, um, I mean, it, I, didn't, I wasn't aware that it was a 300 person marathon. I thought it was a little bigger than that. But I guess for 300 people, you can um, have activities before the race. Like you have yeah, because it's a, a huge reserve where the marathon is held. And uh, they have, I think it's five or six different uh, uh, lodges where you can stay. So yeah, they have room for 300 people. So that's why you know, the marathon's only for 300 people. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that brings another interesting point. So that's like a Walt Disney World marathon, <laughs> <laughs> right? It's like organized and you have lodges instead yeah. of hotels so it's similar in that uh yeah just a smaller scale <laughs> yeah what about athens because that's another one that's yeah yeah I athens... remember you were injured when you injured right before that yeah i, I had an injury and it was really tough because um especially uh, the uphill parts were really rough on my on my knees and my ankle and there is a very large uphill part <laughs> when you uh, run into Athens. So uh, yeah, I was having a hard time doing that, but it's a, it's a beautiful race to run because of the, the history of the run. And yeah, especially the finish coming into Athens and running into the stadium where the finish is. Yeah, it's a, it's a really beautiful race. And that stadium is something. I yeah. Mean, this, um, we went to a Athens, um, I'm trying to think, 2018, I think it was. Well, we did a cruise, it's nothing, <laughs> but the cruise stopped in Athens. Um, and I remember they took us to the stadium and it was just it's so beautiful. Yeah, because it's, it's an open stadium, so you can just yeah. walk in. And uh, I'd been there years ago and walked around and yeah, you see the stadium, and you think, okay, yeah, it's a nice stadium. But during the marathon, the whole stadium is filled with people and you run in there and everybody's cheering for you. So that's, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, and it's just it's just gotta be amazing. Because there there are not many races in the world where you actually end up in a stadium. No, no. Not many marathons that I can think of. So uh, the the one in Amsterdam, uh, I've run the the half marathon in Amsterdam, and uh, they end up in a stadium. But um, I can't even imagine <laughs> what that has to be for you, you know. And also for the people, you know, your um, family and friends, they can actually go and watch you. Yeah, they can sit in the stadium. Because other marathons have um, seats, but they don't seat many people. You know, it's not like they Yeah, they just put 10, up pictures. There. Yeah. Right, it's maybe, I don't know, a thousand people at most. So another one that I really want to talk about is Berlin. <laughs> oh, Berlin is just the mother. Of, to me, it's just like the mother of all the marathons. But that one in New York City, you know. So... That's, that's still on my list. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm supposed... Supposedly, if all goes well, I'll run it next year. So, because I did the program, the nine plus one. Yeah. Yeah. To run it. So, if nothing happens, if COVID is out of the. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll run it. So, I, I mean, New York City is super hard to get into because the, the lot yeah. allows for, depending on the year, there could be. Last year, I think it was, I've signed up four years for the lottery. And I've never got into, you know, accepted. Yeah, uh, two but or last three times year, I've signed up. No. Yeah, last year, I think it was um, 80,000 runners signing up for the lottery and only 3,000 people got in. Yeah. Because they have so many slots for the 9 plus 1 program and for people who qualify. Um, and then people racing, um, fundraising money that it's just very hard to get into. 
Yeah, but Berlin. Let's talk about Berlin. It's like, uh, and and you have that picture, and you're so happy with you know the gate <laughs> behind you and everything. Um, yeah, that was amazing to run there. How how was it? How is how is the whole experience? Is it because I've I've heard the whole city is like changes because of all the runners and all people. Yeah, the, even the the day before, you see everybody walking around Berlin in in running gear. Uh, you can pick out all the runners there. Everybody that's walking around shopping or sightseeing. Everybody's in running gear and wearing their running shoes. Uh, everybody's prepared for their uh, for their marathon. Uh, it's just a a really huge thing and it, of course it's part of the six majors so that, that makes it a, a big thing it was my my first six majors run and the atmosphere during the race is just amazing because i've never seen as much uh, entertainment during a course as during the berlin marathon there were bands and people singing dancing and pretty much along the entire course there were there were people there there's one part of the race where you go a little bit outside the center of the city other than that, there's people everywhere. And it was raining pretty much the entire time. Nobody cared. Everybody was there. Everybody's making music and in little tents and people just dancing in the street. Yeah, it was, it was pretty amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. So what's your next, what do you have in mind for your next marathon? I'm um, sure, like yeah. on a standby right now, but. Yeah, seeing that everything's getting canceled, uh, yeah, I missed out on uh, my last marathon, which I was going to do the uh, rock and roll marathon in Nashville in April. Oh wow! Very so cool. that that got postponed to to next year. Well, they postponed it to September, I think. But yeah, I can't go, so uh, I'll uh, defer it to next year. And that's a week after the Star Wars races in uh, Florida in Disney right. World. So I'll be that was the plan this year to do both. So that's the plan for next year now. Uh, I'm really close to Rotterdam and Rotterdam has a marathon, which is really big and it's a big uh, favorite here in Europe. And uh, it's always in April. And the last couple of years I've either been in Rome or in the States, I've always been somewhere else. I've, I've never run a marathon that's closest to where I live. Uh, right. they, they postponed it right now to October 25th. So if it stays that way and I'm still able to register, seeing that I'm not traveling anywhere for, for marathons right now, uh, I might do that one. But other than that, I have, I have nothing planned. I'm not registered for anything, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see when the next marathons are. I have a long list of marathons that I still want to do. So. <laughs> oh, so what, which one is on your top? Um, if you could do any marathon, like right if now. I could do okay, you have any access. marathon. Um, I really love the, the Big Five marathon, and there's a, a similar marathon in Kenya. <laughs> <laughs> where you, you walk through a, a game reserve so i really love to do that uh also there's one uh at niagara falls where uh, you actually cross the border into canada uh i'd love to do that one uh, and the six majors yeah the, i want to do all of them I've, I've only done berlin so yeah and uh, new york chicago they're all on my list <laughs> tokyo boston and london yeah. yeah you have yeah but yeah they're all so hard to get into so yeah yeah they are yeah, it's a shame because with this um, pandemic, it's like our lives as runners are on standby. Yeah. A little bit. So how, how are you training right now? Because I know you're serious about your training and you're fast. <laughs> Some of your times, you're like way, yeah, you're fast. Uh, yeah, lately I've been uh, doing uh, virtual runs. Uh, so uh, before I was actually training indoors because I, I didn't go outside for 10 weeks. So I was training on the treadmill, which made it really tough because, yeah, it's, it's just too boring. I just can't do it. Yeah, but and your joints, my, everything aches when you're... Yeah, it just runs different. Treadmill. So uh, yeah, I was happy to be, be able to go outside again. And now with the virtual runs, because you said I'm fast, but the, it's, a, it's a group thing. And the people that I'm running with in the teams, they're a lot faster than I am. <laughs> so that, that, that is very motivating for me as well to, to work harder and keep doing better. So, uh, so yeah, it's, it's good to stay motivated in, in different ways now because you, you don't have races. You don't have races to train for. Right. So that makes it a, a bit harder. But, uh, yeah, I, I've noticed myself that my motivation is a lot lower than it normally is because, yeah, uh, now last week at the Disneyland, Paris races in September got canceled. So yeah, that, that was the last thing I was signed up for. And now that there's nothing really that I'm 
actually looking yeah. forward to that that's actually happening that I know I'm going to be running at. It's tough. Right. Some of the races that are smaller here, um, I've started getting emails saying that they are planning to still hold them. So I got a couple of emails from races that have like 200 people that are local. I think those will end up happening like October or November just because it's, you know, they can separate people like yeah. enough. Although I don't know how you, I mean, at one point or another, I guess you're going to have to just risk it, you know? I, yeah, because at, at some point you're going to have to stand together in a, in a wave right. or, yeah. Uh, right. I, I got an email yesterday from a, a race in Belgium that is going ahead, but they're uh, spreading it out over 10 days. I'm not exactly sure how they're going to do that and how many people are allowed every day, wow. but, but they're, uh, and uh, that's a, a trail course as well. So maybe that's a little bit easier because, yeah, if you're running through a city, there's a lot of problems with other people as well but if you're running through trails right. it makes it a little bit easier i guess yeah but just in terms of support supporting that race for 10 days is a lot yeah well they you know the yeah. volunteers have to keep coming back yeah so i wanted to um give you the opportunity to talk about your coaching as well because i know you um you know when you started you were very um excited about it i could tell <laughs> in your videos so what do you think makes you, what, what's your approach to coaching? Because, you know, coaches are like training programs. They're all different. So do you focus more on speed training, long runs? What, what's your, um, how do you make a runner get to their goals? Uh, yeah, it really depends on the, the person and what goal they have for their, for their running. Uh, most people just want to be able to run the distance. So that's a little right. bit easier for me to do, especially uh, online. Because, yeah, uh, I, if I can't be there for the training itself, then it's, it's tough for me to actually keep you motivated during the run or make you run faster. But uh, I can set up a schedule for the distance that you need to run and the way you need to set it up for, for your race and to be able to have that deadline and, and be ready for it. But, yeah, if you want to run faster, which... I'm actually doing for my own schedule. Uh, yeah, I have extra exercises that you have to do or uh, different runs that you do. Like uh, I really enjoy uh, fart leg runs uh, where you have to increase your speed and then uh, slow down and to recover and increase your speed again. And that is something that I use in my training as well for, uh, for people that want to work on their speed. I wanted to talk to you about shoes because we... <laughs> <laughs> We all have our shoes that are our favorite and, you know, we runners love talking about shoes. <laughs> so <laughs> which shoes are your favorite right now? Um, I think the uh, Adidas Solar Boost are my favorites. Oh. Uh, yeah, they're just really comfortable. There's a lot of boost in there. There's a really good cushioning. Uh, I just love running in those. And I recently uh, retired one, one of my pairs, the, the first pair I had, but I have uh, two brand new pairs still sitting in a box. So I'm looking forward oh, to good start running on those. <laughs> yeah. I love Adidas and Adidas, it's really interesting because in the United States, um, most people tend to run in like the Brooks, the Asics, um, Nike, but in Europe, I know my running friends in Spain, they all love Adidas. So it's like, yeah, I guess it's just a lot Popular. bigger here. I think they're from Germany, so maybe that's why. Yeah. yeah, and it gives you, I don't know, but um, when I turn the shoes around and I see Continental, I just like it that exactly <laughs> where the rubber is coming from. You know? Yeah. Like if they're good for my tires in my car, they should be good for me. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, again, thank you so much, Arno, for being here. You're welcome. Thank you I love uh, for having talking me. to I you. <laughs> I've been a fan forever. So this, this may. Thank you. I'm yeah. sure to you around. I'll put all your links um, below. I'll put your coaching, um, your site as well. So people know what okay. to do. Yeah. And yeah, so much fun. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> See you soon, Arna. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, wasn't that an awesome interview? I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed filming it. All the links will be in the info bar below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe for more videos like this one, and I'll see you soon. Land fearless, you guys. Bing.